நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனவுண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வெர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் அ டமிழ் வீடியோ is given in the description box of this video this is astrologer deepa and i'm presenting you the english version of the tamil video in my last video i explained the effects of sun in 12 different houses for the native of aries ascendant in this video i'm going to explain the effects of sun in 12 different houses for the native of taurus ascendant for the native of taurus ascendant sun is the lord of fourth house the dead enemies to venus are sun and moon however for native of taurus ascendant sun becomes the lord of quadrant house therefore sun will not give worse effects what is the reason behind this the reason is sun is a malefic and it becomes lord of the quadrant so it will not deliver worse effects moon becomes marakadivadi and it will deliver worse effects for the native of taurus ascendant moon becomes marakadivadi which delivers worse effects equal to padakadivadi for the native of libra ascendant whose house lord is also venus sun becomes padagadipati therefore for native of taurus ascendant sun will not deliver much worse effects it will deliver benefits within a certain limit for this native because sun is the lord of the quadrant house when sun resides in ascendant house that is in taurus itself it is good when sun resides in house of taurus sun gains subhatva when sun resides in ascendant house these people make decisions very quickly these people will not think before taking a decision and they will face the consequences only after making decisions these people cannot be controlled by others and these people would love to control others therefore please try to make predictions based on significance of the sun when sun is in the ascendant house with subhatva then it is good it will not deliver much worse effects even if it is alone as it resides in the 10th house to its own house now let me explain the effects of sun in the second house for the native of taurus ascendant 
for the native of Taurus ascendant when sun resides in second house that is in Gemini Mithuna it is not generally good the Lord of the fourth house is in the second house though sun is Lord of fourth house it is a malefic so it should not be in second house Sun being a malefic should not reside in second house. Since sun is a malefic, it should not be in house of family, house of wealth, and if it has to deliver benefits, it should remain subatwa. However, despite all this, it will not deliver much worse effects to the native of Taurus ascendant. If you are native of Taurus ascendant, you should not get panicked as soon as you see sun in the second house in your natal chart. Because sun is 50% benefic as well. And it resides in the house whose house lord treats the sun as its best friend. Mercury, the house lord of Gemini, treats sun as its most friendly planet. When sun resides in second house, as long as it is not in connection with Saturn or Rahu, it will not deliver worse effects. At the same time, if sun gets connected to Jupiter or Venus or waxing moon or full moon, then it will be in a position to deliver benefits. Now let me explain what would happen if sun resides in third house which is Cancer. When sun resides in Cancer, it delivers immense benefits. When sun resides in 3rd house to Ascendant and though it resides in 12th house to its own house, in house of Cancer, whose house lord is Moon, it will deliver benefits. But in order to predict what effects it will deliver exactly, you have to assess the strength of light energy of the Moon. If the moon is waxing or if it is heading towards Purnima, that is full moon, then sun will deliver immense benefits. Let me explain the effect of sun in Leo for the native of Taurus ascendant. If sun resides in its very own house Leo, that is in fourth house to ascendant, it is good because sun is malefic and when it resides in a quadrant house it is good you can make a different prediction here that is both the parents that is the mother and father will be in a good status can you guess what could be the reason because the fourth house denotes the mother and son is a significator of father therefore when fourth house lord is in fourth house itself the parents will be in a good status. In case, if son in Leo gets Subhatva, then both mother and father will be in a good status. Therefore, when son resides in fourth house and the major planetary period of son happens, it is good. Now, let me explain about the effect of son when it resides in Virgo for the native of Taurus ascendant. When sun resides in Virgo, it is fifth house to ascendant and second house to its own house Leo. In this case, it delivers both benefits and worse effects since sun is 50% malefic and 50% benefic. However, sun resides in second house to its own house and in fifth house to ascendant. When sun is Subhatva here, it will deliver benefits. When sun is Pabhatva, that is when it is in connection with Rahu or Saturn, it will deliver very worse effects. As per planetary position, if fourth lord is in fifth house, it is good. Now, let me explain what will happen when Sun resides in Libra, which is 6th house to Ascendant. In the 6th house to Ascendant, Sun gets debilitated. 
that is sun gets debilitated in house of libra for native of aries ascendant i hope you can recall i told when sun resides in libra it is okay to a certain extent but for native of taurus ascendant when sun resides in 6th house where it gets debilitated it is not favorable however sun being a luminous planet is in 6th house yet it is in the house of a benefic libra is the house owned by venus here sun should not get connected to saturn or rahu I hope you understand what I come to say. Even debilitated sun is okay, but when sun is in connection with malefic, it is not good. Sun is the fourth lord for native of Taurus ascendant, and it is in third house to its own house, Leo, and it gets debilitated as well, so it will not deliver much benefits. Therefore, for the native of Taurus ascendant, when sun resides in the house of debilitation, Subhatva factors in. If sun is Subhatva, definitely sun will deliver benefits. There will not be much worse effects. Now, let me explain the effect of sun in house of Scorpio. When sun resides in Scorpio, it is seventh house to the ascendant. and when sun resides in scorpio it will aspect the ascendant itself when sun resides in 7th house to the ascendant it resides in its friendly house the only shortcoming is that sun is aspecting the ascendant when sun aspects the ascendant it gives a lot of overconfidence it will lead the native to be Uh, indifferent to others the native will be careless and you know if the self confidence is more than a limit it gives a lot of over confidence thus leading to arrogance there is a difference between a planet which is a malefic aspecting the ascendant and a planet being a benefic aspecting the ascendant when sun which is 50% malefic resides in 7th house it will affect the marital life to a certain extent because sun is 50% benefic and 50% malefic therefore when sun is in connection with ascendant and when it resides especially in 7th house it will make the native not to have a better understanding with the spouse Therefore when sun resides in 7th house it will not give great benefits based on this planetary position Now let me explain the next position When sun resides in 8th house to the ascendant it is not good because being a luminous planet sun should not reside in 8th house to the ascendant Yet it resides in the house of a benefic which is jupiter because when sun resides in 8th house to the ascendant it resides in sagittarius whose house lord is jupiter sun does not deliver much benefits when it resides in 8th house to the ascendant house since it resides in the house of a benefic jupiter it will not deliver worse effects as well Definitely we have to realize that when sun resides in house of Sagittarius or Pisces it will not deliver much worse effects The reason is sun gains subhatva when it resides in house of Jupiter Now let me explain the effects of sun when it resides in 9th house to the ascendant that is in house of Capricorn Here definitely you have to recall the concept of karaho bhavanasti When sun is subhatva then there will not be much worse effects When sun resides in Capricorn which is house of Saturn 
and when it is also in connection with Rahu, it will definitely affect the father. Or when it is in connection with Saturn, it will definitely affect the father. In case if Sun is in conjunction with Venus, then the effects will completely differ. Imagine that Venus works here as a safe god for the Sun. Venus is the planet which always travels with Sun within maximum degrees of 49 degrees. Therefore, in any situation, when Sun is in connection with Venus, it delivers benefits. If it has combusted Venus, then Sun will deliver immense benefits. But please remember that Venus gets spoiled by the Sun. When Sun is in conjunction with Venus, especially when it has combusted Venus, Sun has become very Subhatva. But how the major planetary period of Venus will be? The Dasha of Venus will be totally spoiled. And merely six years of major planetary period of Sun will be good, whereas 20 years of Venus Dasha will be very bad. There is always an opposite reaction to all the actions done. Since Venus always travels with Sun in close degree, and while you are predicting the effect of Sun, you have to definitely check the position of Venus for making accurate predictions. Therefore, when Sun resides in 9000 Capricorn to Ascendant, though it is considered as Karaho Bhavanasti, when Sun gets Subhatva, that is, when it is in conjunction with Venus, it will not deliver worse effects of Karaho Bhavanasti. When Sun is Pabhatva here, it will affect the father and paternal properties. As soon as you see Karaho Bhavanasti and Sun is also Pabhatva in House of Capricorn, you should not definitely make quick predictions like it will affect father or that father will have some crucial situation. The native might even get paternal properties but there might be problems with the relation of paternal side or as soon as the major planetary period of sun starts, the native will move abroad in order to help his father, which in a way the native will be separated from his father. As soon as you see that the ninth house suffers from Karho Bhavanasti, you should not make a very hasty prediction that this planetary position will kill the native of the father. As soon as the major planetary period of sun starts, there might be a fight between the sun and the father. Or as soon as the major planetary period of sun starts, the native will get married and he might move abroad. In case if native gets separated from the father and leaves to a very distant place or abroad and returns after major planetary period of the sun, the father will stay alive. It needs a lot of skills to exactly predict what will happen. Well, having said this, what will happen when sun resides in Capricorn in ninth house to ascendant which brings Karaho Bhavanasti. Based on status of the sun, that is Subhatva or Pabhatva, you have to make predictions. When sun is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu in house of Capricorn, then it is said to be very inauspicious to the status of father. However, it doesn't mean that it will bring death to father. The father might go ill, there will be some health concerns, etc. Therefore, when son resides in ninth house with Subhatva, it will not affect father, it will not affect receiving the paternal properties and in addition to this, it will not affect the self-confidence of the native as well. 
When sun resides in Aquarius, which is 10th house to the house of Taurus, it is a good planetary position. Sun in 10th house will give the native a lot of strength that can help to face any challenges. This will bring benefits such as government jobs, benefits from government, leadership position and it will also give an immense growth in their own business. The sun in 10th house can start their own business. When sun is in 10th house, one can have their own business. Please try to understand that when sun resides in 10th house, the significant effect is that one can start their own business. If anybody, any of your clients inquires whether they can start their own business, you have to check definitely the 10th house to the ascendant. You have to check whether they have sun in the 10th house in their natal chart. The next planet that you have to check is Mercury. Because Mercury is a planet which signifies trading and business. If Sun and Mercury is connected with the 10th house to the Ascendant, then it means they can start their own business. This person will not definitely like to work for somebody else. If Sun and Mercury are connected with 10th house, then the person will not incline to work for others. This nature will not tend to work as a servant for others, rather they prefer people to work for them. These sort of feelings will be invoked when Sun and Mercury or either of them resides in 10th house. And I hope you very well know that Sun attains Drigbala in the 10th house. That is directional strength. I have already explained about the directional strength of the Sun in 10th house, so I don't want to repeat that point here. Let me explain the effect of Sun in house of Pisces. When Sun resides in the 11th house in Pisces, it can bring unfathomable benefits. The benefits delivered by the Sun here are magnificent. It is a better planetary position when Sun resides in Pisces rather than being exalted in house of Aries, which is 12th house to the Ascendant. It is in this case you have to understand the concept of Thanabala. The sun that resides in house of Jupiter which gains Subhatva will deliver immeasurable benefits to the native of Taurus ascendant rather than being in house of Mars which is Aries with exaltation status where it gains more Thanabala. I always say that a malefic should not gain direct strength. Well, now let me explain the effect of Sun in house of Aries. When Sun resides in Aries, it is in the 12th house to the Ascendant. When Sun resides in house of Aries, it should not be definitely in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. I would like to explain with an example of how we prepare coffee. Yes, coffee. To prepare a coffee, we need some milk, decoction and sugar. The milk and sugar are white in color, whereas decoction is dark in color. Please try to compare the preparation of coffee with the effect of conjunction of planets in astrology. To make a perfect coffee, you have to make a proper blend of milk, decoction and sugar. When you add more decoction, what would happen? The coffee will end very black and bitter. Therefore, the proportions of the ingredients are very important. It is the proportion of these ingredients that makes coffee to taste excellent or bitter. If you understand this example, the very same can be applied with planetary combination or conjunction. 
when a planet is in conjunction with more malefics then it becomes pabatwa then it is very very bitter if you understand this coffee decoction example then i don't need to even explain the planetary conjunction effects you will definitely understand the effect of the conjunction of the planets when sun resides in aries it is exalted which is lord of the fourth house it will deliver immense house effects but the significance of the planet will have shortcomings when sun is exalted in house of aries for the native of taurus ascendant then it means father is very strong for the native father is in a very good status sun is the lord of fourth house for the native of taurus ascendant what will happen when the major planetary period of sun starts in general when sun is exalted without pabatwa it means that your father has a very great reputation your grandfather also has got a huge reputation your family will be a known one in the society your family will definitely have some reputation in the society many people would address your lineage when they talk about the reputation of your family such mention is possible when sun is exalted in the natal chart when sun is exalted in a natal chart or when sun is connected with 10th house or when sun is strong in a natal chart then definitely they have a good family background your father will be definitely a pioneer and definitely you will get paternal properties the exaltation of the sun will indicate that native can express to others with pride that he has got some property from the father the art of astrology lies in making predictions by applying the rules and exceptions and choosing the right criteria to apply these as well when sun resides in 12th house it is not considered to be auspicious because sun resides in 12th house to the ascendant and being a very luminous planet it is not good yet sun gains tanabala when it resides in aries and this strength is able to compensate the loss that occurred during the planetary position of sun in 12th house having said all these during major planetary period of sun native can enjoy 4th house effects based on sthanabala the father will also be in a good status despite all these the luminous planets should not be in 12th house please try to understand this point in my next video i'm going to explain the effect of sun in different houses for native of gemini ascendant well this is question time when sun resides in the 7th house to the ascendant without any subhatva is it considered to be auspicious for marital life or not please justify your answer please write your answer in the comment section of this video the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both ios and android users the link of google play store app is also given in the description box that is available for only android users the tamil version of this video is also available please check the description box write your feedback to astro.writetous@gmail.com thank you